So welcome back to another episode with Handyman Dan. On today's episode, we are doing the Clutch Master and Slave. The Clutch Master was leaking fluid. Um, I'll show you that. And yeah, we'll get stuck into changing all that and swapping it over and bleeding it all and getting it all ready. So we've had our parts come. So that's a new master for the clutch. And then this is the slave. Um, this one's genuine Toyota. Well, I could still get one through Toyota. Um, I think it was like 115 or something about that. Um, and this one's a OEM. Um, yeah, that I just got from Super Spares Online. Um, this one was about 100 bucks as well. I'm pretty sure it's Protex brand, which are uh, not too bad. So, that's the clutch master cylinder. So as you can see there, it's um, leaking fluid. So obviously that, that seal somewhere has gone, it's leaking fluid. That could also explain why there was a lot of black, dirty gunk down the bottom when we bled, the sl when we bled it from the slave. Now I'm thinking I might try and do this without removing the dash shroud. Um, it might be a little bit more fiddly, but I think it's doable because there's just the two bolts here and you've got the, the high pressure line there and then the low pressure on top. Um, probably the low pressure is going to be the hardest one to get to, but we'll see if we can do it without taking it off. But yeah, so we'll start undoing it all. So first things first, we're just going to syringe some brake fluid out and which is I know it's all clean put it back in this bottle to put back in later um, just then we can get down below the clutch reservoir so then we can just remove some of the fluid so it doesn't drain everywhere when we disconnect everything to show you this you can see that chamber on this side that's the clutch fluid chamber. Um, so obviously that's separate to the brakes Then if you, if you clutch drains then you won't lose your brakes and vice versa. So this with a nice clean syringe. And we'll just put it back into here. I'll just use this to try and remove as much brake fluid. We'll just put this dust cap back on loosely and we'll just put the lid back on loose just then nothing falls in. Alrighty, next thing we're going to do is bleed the clutch. So, pull the dust cap off. You need to grab a 10 mil, 10 mil ringy and then a catch can. And then we'll use the syringe and vinyl hose that we have. So we can just connect that up onto here. Okay, and then we'll crack this. And we'll just draw through as much fluid as we can just to remove it from the system. So then when we come to disconnect everything, there's less brake fluid spilling everywhere. Alrighty, so pretty much for the most part we're just pulling air so we've removed most of the fluid. I'm happy enough with that. Okay now we'll look at removing this slave cylinder so then the rest of the fluid can just drain out from here before we go and do the master inside. We 12s. slave cylinder pulled out. This is the lovely thing about buying Genuine. They are both absolutely the same. Very nice. All right, we'll throw this in. So remember to move the rubber grommet from that end. You can just slip that in. Lift them up firm. They don't need to be ridiculously tight, just about as tight as they were to get undone, so. We do, and then we can Thread the line back in, nice and firm, we can check the leaks later, just don't over tighten it so you strip it. That's the slave, easy as that. We can go around now and do the master, so I just quickly make sure this is done up, yep, and make sure I can get it undone as well, yep, 
go. And brand new dust cap. Lovely. Okie dokie. So looking up from underneath, it looks pretty straightforward. We've got, we've got that outlet there, high pressure side. We've got the two bolts holding it. We've got the um, bolt back there. Then we've got the in, feed in, which is here from the reservoir. Um, as you can see, that comes off the top of the master at 90 degrees, whereas this one is perpendicular. So we'll just get a socket, undo this, and tilt that so then it's 90. So then we can put it straight in like that. So that's the first thing we'll do. We'll get that. So then this matches exactly how the old one is to make it easier for us to undo and redo that hose. It's just a 21 mil socket. Loosen that off. Pivot that around. We'll just crack these so we can get them undone by hand. And I feel like we don't have to remove the dash. I'm pretty sure to do this in the manual. It says to remove the steering column and all that again, but I don't see why. Okay, we'll undo the high pressure. Perfect. So definitely better to undo this first, just because when you undo the mounting bolts, this spreads and then you can't get onto it. Just get a rag ready to catch any fluid, but hopefully there isn't much. So I've just folded that and wrapped it around the end of that just to hopefully catch any fluid that decides to drip. So that's all that done. The next thing there is is there's a split pin with a pin that comes through. So we want to disconnect that. Pull that pin out. Standard pin, split pin. Okay, now we'll undo the, well, I'll loosen off of these bolts fully. Pretty much get them out. Um, and then from there we can, we'll undo the input, or what would be the feeder from the reservoir. And just with the pliers, let's get a rag ready just in case. So you just put the screwdriver in there just to pry between the, um, plastic surface and the hose just to help pry it off. Now let's see how much fluid leaks. Not much. Put that in there. Slide the two bolts out. And to try and get this thing out of here. Trying not to tip it so then all the fluid doesn't run out everywhere. So far so good. There we go. Look at the like black sludge in the end of that. Lovely. That's our old one. This is our new one. Now we need to do is work out the right distances from the mounting point to where this is. And we'll just put it back in at the exact same. As you can see, that's pretty much backed off most of the way to there. But yeah, obviously it looks like the units are slightly different in length. Um, as you can see, this one Shred a bit more there to center that mounting hole. Close enough to about 120. About 10 to 15 mil off this. And then it's always good practice to keep a nut or something on there, just so when you thread it off, it'll cut the thread nicely and so it won't be an issue to get the new piece that, like anything you want to thread back on. So we can snip this up. 14, 12. So now we've got that all tightened up. We can check the measurements. And see what we are from center to center. Center to center, about 125. So now we're ready to put this back in. Okay. There we go, that's that. Just slide these back in. Hold it roughly. Perfect. 
Okay, now we'll remove the rag and we'll put the hose back on. It was definitely good draining everything beforehand. Do up these two. Dust cap out. Took a little bit of fiddling around, but got there with the high pressure outlet. Now we can just do that up. Do that up. Okay, that should be. Now, next thing to do is to put the split pin, or the, the pin, the split pin back in. There you go, that's that. We'll finish doing up these. Sweet. Both the mounting bolts done up firm. We've got the hose from the reservoir, the in inlet on, the high pressure out. We've done the slave, good to go. So, we'll top it up with brake fluid. You can see that chamber on this side? That's the clutch fluid chamber. But yeah, so we'll have to fill that up. So to fill that up, basically you need to fill it all the way up to the top and then it will drain in there slowly. So we'll fill that up and just keep filling it up and bleed the system. So we have our brake fluid. As you can see, that's just it's just running into that the clutch. Because that would have overflowed by now. There we go, now we're finally filling it up. Okay, so now we've jumped back under the bus. We can remove the dust cap. So we can get our brake fluid catch can. It just involved having that in there and then cracking this off. Crack that so it's open. Put this in here, like so. And then all I'm doing is, yep, I think so. We just do this back up, like so. And now, when we press on the clutch, you should see the slave move. Well, I'd call that a success. We have the clutch pedal back, which we did not have a clutch at all, because uh, the master cylinder just wasn't holding pressure at all. But now we've done that and bled it and we've got the clutch. The clutch feels nice and heavy. We can change gears, even stationary. Um, but yeah, I'll keep you updated. We'll take it for a test drive when we next drive it. And we'll see how it goes. But it feels 10 times better than it was. So hopefully we have achieved what we wanted to. But I hope you found something useful in this video. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe for more because we're doing lots more work on the coaster over the time. So. Yeah, cheers. Thank you.